few people know much about the roofed lizard of the late Jurassic, Stegosaurus, at least beyond the fact that a. it had triangular plates on its back, b. it was dumber than the average dinosaur, and c. plastic Stegosaurus figurines look pretty cool on an office desk. But this 150 million year old dinosaur has a lot more to show for itself. For one, the Stegosaurus was about as old to T-Rex as T-Rex is to us. That really makes it a whole other ancient beast. And perhaps the most iconic member of the Stegosaurids. During the end of the Jurassic period, about 145 to 200 million years ago, the mighty Stegosaurus roamed the Earth in places like Western North America. These creatures were part of a group called Stegosaurs, known for their four-legged stance and long, beak-shaped heads. But inside the gigantic beak-shaped head of Stegosaurus was a walnut-sized brain, and that's what makes scientists think it was a bit of a bimbo. But you'll be surprised to know that it's plausible the Stegosaurus also had another brain, located in its butt, to make up for that small brain size. A dinosaur with two brains? Could it really be? Before we let you in on that, here's what the dinosaur was really like. Stegosaurus was a type of dinosaur known for its large body, spiked tail, and plated back. There were three known species, Stegosaurus stenops, Stegosaurus ungulatus, and Stegosaurus sulcatus. It had four sturdy legs and a tail adorned with plates and spikes, measuring 60 to 90 centimeters long. With a length of 9 meters from head to tail and a height of 4 meters, it was built like a bus. During the late Jurassic period, it coexisted with massive dinosaurs like Diplodocus and formidable predators like Allosaurus. Weighing up to 7 metric tons, it was comparable in mass to a large elephant. But despite their size, they were relatively slow-moving creatures capable of reaching speeds up to 5 miles per hour, 7 kilometers per hour, at their maximum. That's half of how fast an average human can run. Paleontologists believe Stegosaurus mainly ate low-lying plants like cycads, and a computer simulation from 2016 showed that its bite force was similar to that of a sheep or cow. Their distinctive backplates are what they're most famous for, but Stegosaurus had other interesting skeletal traits too. It had a long, arched spine and noticeably shorter front limbs compared to its hind limbs. This likely resulted in the dinosaur holding its tail high in the air while keeping its head low to the ground, which would have been convenient for feeding on shrubs at ground level. It also had a distinct spinal structure with 10 neck vertebrae, 17 back vertebrae, 27 tail vertebrae near the sacrum, and a total of 46 tail vertebrae. These bones were mostly similar in shape, only varying in size, with the largest ones around the back and base of the tail. Looking at its limbs, the well-preserved skeletons show that its front limbs were shorter and thinner compared to its longer, wider hind limbs. This difference in size led to its unique posture, where its hind limbs lifted its tail high while its head and neck were lower, making it easier for grazing and using its tail for defense. The hind feet of Stegosaurus had three toes, while the front feet had five, with the innermost toe forming a hoof-like structure on each foot. Now for Stegosaurus's most unique features, the plates and tail spikes. It typically had between 17 and 22 plates, arranged in two rows along its spinal column. These plates were kite-shaped, with the largest ones over the hips reaching over 60 centimeters wide by 60 centimeters tall in extreme cases. But contrary to what you might expect, the plates were not entirely made of bone, nor were they directly attached to the skeleton. Instead, they were modified scales known as osteoderms that projected upward from the skin on the dinosaur's back. These plates had bony cores that toughened them and kept them upright throughout the dinosaur's life. On top of this, there may have been a tough sheath of keratin covering them. Many modern animals have osteoderms, similar to the tough bony structures on the back of crocodiles or alligators. Like these modern examples, Stegosaurus's plates served a protective function but apart from that, the patterns on the plates on each Stegosaurus species might have been crucial for identifying different species. It's believed that each species had unique plate arrangements. For instance, Stegosaurus stenops had plates arranged alternatively down its spine, while other species may have had plates in neat rows, similar to the patterns of a zebra. No two plates on any individual Stegosaurus were the same size or shape. 
The function of these plates has been a topic of debate among paleontologists. Some suggest they were for defense, forming an armored layer to protect the dinosaur from attackers. However, this theory is now considered outdated due to the fragility and placement of the plates. Some still hold on to this idea, but it's not widely accepted. Another theory, proposed in 1986, suggested that the plates of Stegosaurus were actually cores of horns along its back, similar to those seen in some mammals today, serving as protection from attacks. Perhaps Stegosaurus could orientate these plates to aim the horns at attackers, but this theory hasn't gained widespread support. Now, the theory that has become widely accepted about the function of Stegosaurus's plates is that they were used for thermoregulation. They helped cool the dinosaur when it was warm and absorbed sunlight to warm it up when it was cold. This idea is supported by evidence of blood vessel networks within the plates, suggesting they could absorb heat or cold from the environment and transfer it through the dinosaur's body. Similar structures are found in modern animals like elephants and alligators, indicating that this function is quite plausible for Stegosaurus plates. Moving to its skull, these guys had a thin, elongated skull that was relatively small compared to its massive body. It was positioned low on its body, making it difficult for the dinosaur to move its neck up and down. Scientists believe Stegosaurus was a browser, not a grazer, meaning it fed on plant matter from shrubs and ferns close to the ground. Its snout had a toothless, beak-like structure, similar to some modern birds and turtles, which it used to shred vegetation for consumption. Dinosaurs, kinda like Winnie the Pooh, are often portrayed as dumb creatures. They're said to have small brains, similar to modern reptiles, and among them, herbivores like the large sauropod Stegosaurus typically have even lower brain-to-body ratios. In fact, Stegosaurus is often said to have had a brain the size of a walnut, although it was more like the size of a lime or a dog's brain. Still, considering its massive size, it had a relatively small brain, weighing no more than 80 grams, which is about 0.001% of its total body weight. That makes it one of the least intelligent dinosaurs compared to its body size. Now, absurd as it may sound, there's a rumor that Stegosaurus had a second brain located in its hips. This idea started back in 1881, when a scientist mentioned an enlarged cavity above the dinosaur's hip region, calling it a posterior brain case. However, there's no evidence to support this theory. Some researchers think this cavity might have stored glycogen, a type of sugar that provides energy to cells. But even without a second brain, Stegosaurus has some cool claims to fame. It's the official state fossil of Colorado, and even inspired parts of Godzilla's design, now, Stegosaurus may have been large, but it lived alongside even larger dinosaurs in the late Jurassic period. Sauropods like Camarasaurus reaching 60 feet, 18 meters in length, and Diplodocus measuring up to 80 feet, 24 meters, overshadowed Stegosaurus. And although it didn't have to contend with Tyrannosaurus rex, it faced other formidable predators in its ecosystem. Allosaurus, for example, was a common threat, reaching lengths of up to 28 feet, 8.5 meters, with powerful jaws and serrated teeth. However, Stegosaurus wasn't defenseless as it had four tail spikes that it could use for protection. Fossil evidence suggests that these spikes were indeed used in combat, with about 10% of examined specimens showing signs of trauma. One example includes a deep wound on an Allosaurus pubic bone, likely caused by a Stegosaurus tail spike. It seems that these dinosaurs engaged in battles, resulting in injuries on both sides. For instance, a Stegosaurus neck plate with signs of gnawing from an Allosaurus was found in Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry in Utah. But Stegosaurus was well equipped to deal with such attacks, as the underside of its throat was covered in tiny, pebble-shaped chunks of bone. Called gula armor, it helped protect the dinosaur when Allosaurus and other carnivores went for the jugular. Stegosaurus, like many plant-eating dinosaurs of its time, swallowed small rocks called gastroliths to help grind up tough plants in its large stomach. Given its massive size, it likely had to consume hundreds of pounds of ferns and cycads daily to sustain its metabolism, which was presumed to be cold-blooded. But, you know, it's also possible that Stegosaurus swallowed rocks because it had a brain the size of a walnut. Who knows? Besides this, these dinosaurs were among the first ever to evolve cheeks. Despite lacking in other areas, this dinosaur had a relatively advanced anatomical feature, 
Experts suggest that Stegosaurus may have had primitive cheeks based on the shape and arrangement of its teeth. Now, cheeks were important because they enabled Stegosaurus to thoroughly chew and pre-digest its food before swallowing. This allowed it to consume more vegetation compared to dinosaurs without cheeks. Stegosaurus was closely related to Ankylosaurus, both belonging to the group of Thyreophorans or shield bearers. While Stegosaurus lived during the late Jurassic period, Ankylosaurus thrived millions of years later during the middle to late Cretaceous period. Both of these dinosaur families were four-footed plant eaters, with Ankylosaurus being characterized by its heavy armor. This armored protection likely made Ankylosaurus even less appealing to predators like raptors and Tyrannosaurus compared to Stegosaurus. The first Stegosaur ever found was Dacantrurus, discovered in Swindon, UK, in 1874 by Richard Owen, the scientist who coined the term dinosaur. Then, in 1877, Othniel Charles Marsh found Stegosaurus armatus in the Rocky Mountains, USA, which gave the group their name. Initially, it was thought that the plates laid flat along the back for protection, but later discoveries showed that they stood upright. However, there's been a lot of confusion with these dinosaurs. Many fossils originally thought to be different Stegosaurus species are now considered the same species or even from a different genus. Even Stegosaurus armatus has been replaced as the main representative of its genus by Stegosaurus stenops because of identification concerns. All of this shows how tricky it's been for paleontologists to understand the family tree of these dinosaurs. Fossils of Stegosaurus are rare, and they often consist of only a few bones, making it hard to compare species accurately. However, a new Stegosaur species, Bashosaurus premitivus, has been discovered in China, dating back to the Middle Jurassic period. This finding suggests that Stegosaurs may have originated in Asia, specifically within the supercontinent of Laurasia over 165 million years ago. Bashanosaurus primitivus could be a close relative to the ancestor of all stegosaurs. This discovery sheds light on the early evolution of these dinosaurs and their spread across different regions of the world. However, they eventually disappeared by the late Cretaceous period. But why? Well, stegosaurus faced extinction due to a combination of factors, Firstly, a decline in their primary food sources, such as cycads, cycadophytes, and bonata tails, may have contributed to their demise. These plants were essential for Stegosaur's diet, and their disappearance could have led to a shortage of food. Additionally, Stegosaurs faced stiff competition from other dinosaur groups, including ankylosaurs, ornithopods, and macronarian sauropods. Macronarians, with their less specialized feeding habits and stronger necks, may have outcompeted stegosaurs for resources. And lastly, the emergence of new herbivorous dinosaurs, like iguanodonts, posed a challenge to stegosaurs. Iguanodonts were efficient at processing plant material thanks to their ability to chew food using cheeks and multiple teeth. This allowed them to consume food more quickly and efficiently than stegosaurs. In the end, stegosaurs remains an iconic figure in the world of dinosaurs. Its distinctive bony plates, spiked tail, and huge, imposing structure has inspired beasts like Godzilla. And hey, even with its relatively small brain, it was still a formidable presence in the late Jurassic period. And that's a wrap. Do you believe that Stegosaurus actually had two brains, or just one? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.